Do we know if um, the microbiome of a child is, I don't know how to say this, but without saying it, is more fragile than the microbiome of an adult? So, for example, if we're taking, like you said, like we all know, rightful measures to, to, deal, to deal with COVID, but it's impacting their microbiome, like is it, yeah, is it is it um, is there a risk that it's just hard for them to uh, regain what they had initially because they're just so young and it, their microbiome's fragile? Or do we know anything about that? Yeah, you know, then that's a that's another worrying thing. So we don't know again too much because uh, we're still very much in the infancy of understanding this. But what we do know is that the microbiome of a child. Um, there's a there's a window for development, and that window for development seems to be between the ages of birth to three years. And after that time, that microbiome becomes very much um, uh, set. It should look it looks more like an adult microbiome by that point, but it becomes very um, I don't want to say set because that 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 suggests that it doesn't change. It does change, but it becomes very much more. Um, uh, maintained, if you like, mm-hmm. you know, you, you end up with this sort of poo print idea that, uh, um, so a poo print is something that that's with you for life, like a fingerprint. Uh, it's not quite like that, but it is kind of close that you do get colonized by microbes that stay with you for life in terms of uh, the species content and things like that. So that process of colonization happens in that first three years. And um, and then after that time, for some reason, it becomes very difficult to change that microbiome, whether or mm. not it's a good microbiome or a bad microbiome. And the reason for that, and, and, and I say good and bad, you know, we don't know <laughs> how to define that, but, you know, not so good and not so bad. Um, the, the, the reason we think that it might be very difficult to change is by the age of three years, the immune system has developed a bit more and it develops... Um, as um, influenced by the gut microbiome. And so the two things kind of work together. After the age of three years, it becomes very difficult to change. But if you have, if you interfere with the process of that developing microbiome by, I don't know, um, uh, using hand sanitizer or doing all of these other things, and, and some of those things may have only very minor effects, and some may have more major effects. For example, antibiotic use, uh, you may actually end up with um, with a microbiome that is d- disabled in some way, and then that becomes sort of set. Uh, for life. And so, yeah. you know, that's kind of what I was alluding to in the beginning when I'm saying my microbiome is probably that way. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and so th- the difficulty there is we don't know how set it is and we don't know how much we can influence it and change it later in life. Um, the, I mean, I think the good news is that um, I think that, that it can be changed, but I think it's not just a sort of like a one hit, uh, here, take this probiotic and everything mm-hmm. will be better. But I, I think that we need to understand uh, more about diet and things like that and how we can uh, maintain a microbiome uh, that, and we don't understand that um, right right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, I mean, it does concern me in COVID times that we have a generation of children now being brought up who are basically being kept um, for good reason, uh, away from the world. So they're right. not being colonized by the right kinds, whatever they are, the right kinds of microbes in a, in, in a sort of natural way. And, uh, and yeah, that is a concern. 